brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign led says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come forth from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy to them and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. O my people. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of our Lord brothers and sisters in our Savior, Jesus Christ. The actor gave an inspiring performance, so the audience gave him a standing ovation. The coach gave an inspiring speech. Her team won the game. The teacher taught inspiring lessons. His students earned excellent grades. That's what inspiring people do. They don't just let you sit there, be bored and lazy and do nothing. Inspiring people motivate you. They stir your emotions. They fill you with excitement and enthusiasm. And that's what we see happen on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit inspired Peter and the Apostle to preach about Jesus. The Holy Spirit then inspired the crowds in Jerusalem to believe in Jesus. Or in other words, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descends in a mighty wind and breathes into the preaching of the apostles, and he breathes life into the hearts of the people. And that's what we celebrate on the festival of Pentecost. God's people live by God's breath, that is, by God's spirit. Now, about 600 years before all of this happened, God gave his people, Israel, a prophetic vision about Pentecost. In our text, Ezekiel says, The Lord set me in the middle of a valley. He led me back and forth, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. Now, the Lord explains the meaning of these dry bones later in our text. He says, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. The Jews were complaining. They were complaining because they were suffering the consequences of their own sins. You see, they were God's people, but they sinned. They they neglected worshiping the one true God. They were God's people, but then they went ahead and worshiped false idols of their pagan neighbors. They were God's people, but then they indulged in the wicked sinfulness, the gross immorality of their pagan neighbors. They were God's people, but they neglected God's justice, and they ignored God's word. And for all their sins, God punished them. 
God allowed the Babylonian armies, the greatest empire at that time, God allowed the Babylonians to come and defeat Judah, not once but twice. And at the time of Ezekiel's vision, the Babylonian armies had destroyed the city of Jerusalem, totally overrun the kingdom of Judah, had torn down the temple, and had sent thousands upon thousands upon thousands of, of Jews into exile. So yes, the, the state of Judah, the nation of God, ceased to exist at least as a political unit. And so when the Jews complained about them being cut off and their bones all dry, they were, they were making an accurate complaint. Their nationality and their independence had dried up. Their hope for their old way of life back in Jerusalem, that was gone. They were exiles, cut off from their homeland. But worst of all, they were exiles, cut off by their own choosing from the one true living God. Now that, that spiritual exile can still and does still happen to God's people today. Cutting yourself off from God, exiling yourself from God happens to you, it happens to me, it happens to our church. And it happens because like the Jews in Ezekiel's day, they, you see, they trusted that the walls of Jerusalem would protect them against the Babylonian army. And so often we think that the walls of this church are going to protect us from the evil outside influences of the world. But then, for example, God's enemies throw something at us. For example, lately it's been a 14-month pandemic that has attacked God's church on earth with all the ferocity of a, of a hateful Babylonian army. And you know, this... This 14-month pandemic has really caused us to be a lot like those people 600 years before the time of Jesus. We abandon God, we, we, we turn away from God, and we, we trust our own intellect. We think, you know, I, I'm a whole lot smarter than those other idiots here at church. I mean, I know the difference between real science and fake science. Or we turn away from God and we worship, ugh, we worship our politics. Now, anything that that politician says is complete garbage, he's an idiot for sure. So I'll only do what my favorite politicians tell me to do. I'll only believe what my favorite news media tells me is real. Or we abandon God and indulge our own egos. <laughs> you know, I've had enough of this. So I'm going to just take the high road in all this uh, pandemic stuff. You know, my only concern is what's best for the church. Of course, what's best for the church just happens to be what your opinion is at that current moment. Of course, that's again just one very glaring current example, but it really doesn't take a pandemic for you or me or any of God's people to turn away from the Lord and be like those Jews 600 years before the time of Christ. Like those Jews did, we let our attitude towards worshiping God, we let it become lazy and lackadaisical, we, get it become, we let it, our worship become become boring and blasé. Like the Jews did, we want to kind of blend in with the rest of society. We don't really want to stand out as the oddballs. We want to be just as materialistic as our society. We want to be just as sexually sophisticated as the rest of society. We want to become just as self-obsessed and self-indulgent as this unbelieving world. But when those actions, when those desires fill us, then our spiritual life evaporates. We truly do become dry bones when we, cut our, when we cut ourselves off from the living God. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Because only the Holy Spirit can breathe life back into these dry, dead bones. It's only the Holy Spirit can give us the breath of life, that breath of life called faith. You see, we can't do that to ourselves. We can't breathe life into our faith any more than a desert can make it rain. We can't make spiritual oxygen flow back into our souls any more than those dry bones on that valley in Ezekiel's vision could have put themselves together, could have made flesh come upon them, could have put breath in themselves. No, we cannot by our own thinking or choosing come to Jesus Christ our Lord or believe in Him. We cannot come 
to our own spiritual life on our own. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Well, thankfully, mercifully, that is what the Holy Spirit does. And Ezekiel describes it this way. He says, Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. So God commanded Ezekiel to prophesy to the breath, that is, to preach to the spirit, because spirit and breath are really the same thing. And that's how God works. When God's preachers proclaim God's word, the Holy Spirit uses that word to breathe the life of faith into spiritual corpses so that they may live by that gift of faith. And that's what the Holy Spirit did to the dry bones in Ezekiel's vision. That's what the Holy Spirit did to the apostles' preaching on the day of Pentecost. And that's what the Holy Spirit still does for you and me today. The Holy Spirit breathes his breath of life into us. And as good Lutherans, we know how that works. The Holy Spirit uses the sacrament of baptism to breathe the life of faith into us. The Holy Spirit uses the sermon, the liturgy, the hymns, the, the, the scripture lessons to breathe the life of faith into us. The Holy Spirit uses Bible study, Bible class, Sunday school, catechism class to breathe the life of faith into you. The Holy Spirit uses the words and promises of Christ connected to the Lord's Supper to breathe his breath of life into you. Every time you hear about Jesus, every time you read the good news that Jesus Christ suffered and died to pay for your sins, every time you see Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the Holy Spirit is breathing himself, his life into you so that you become a living being, a believer in Christ. And why does the Holy Spirit do this? Why does, the, why does God give us so many opportunities to hear His Word and study His Word and receive His Word? Well, God wants us to live. And that's what, that's what God told Ezekiel in our text. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. So the Holy Spirit breathes the life of faith into spiritual corpses so that they become God's people, and God's people can live in their own land. Now, for the people of Ezekiel's day, that meant eventually returning to their land of Judah and reestablishing Jerusalem and rebuilding the temple. But for us, it means that the Holy Spirit inspires us to be God's people. That is, the Holy Spirit fills us with faith so that we are the church, the people of God, here on this earth. But whether it was in Ezekiel's time, at the time of the apostles, or our time, God's people live by no other way other than by God's Spirit. But strangely enough, to give us this life, the Holy Spirit first puts us to death. And we call this death repentance. St. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, If you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if, by the Spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, we smother our sinful nature. We asphyxiate the old Adam. Adam. Every day the Holy Spirit leads us to strangle our sins with sorrow and to turn away from our sins in true repentance. But after the Holy Spirit leads us to the death valley of repentance, He washes away our sins by bringing us to the Garden of Eden of forgiveness and faith in Jesus Christ. Christ crucified, Christ risen, Christ ascended. And then after the Holy Spirit forgives our sins and fills us with the Spirit of Christ, then the Holy Spirit changes us. The Holy Spirit changes materialism, 
into ministry. The Holy Spirit changes selfishness into service. The Holy Spirit changes boasting about self into blessings that we give to others. When the Holy Spirit breathes the life of faith into the church, God's people then burn with the fire of Christ's love. Then we pray for each other fervently. Then God's people encourage each other. Then God's people seize every opportunity to proclaim that good news that Jesus Christ is our Savior. That Jesus Christ lived and died and rose again for our eternal salvation. And that everyone who calls on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. And that's the message that Peter and the Apostles had on the day of Pentecost. That's the message that Ezekiel had for the Jewish exiles in Babylon 2,600 years ago. The message is that God's servants speak God's word and the Holy Spirit inspires their preaching so that the Spirit breathes life into God's people. And that's what the Holy Spirit still does for us today through your called and ordained servants of God's word. By the power of God's word, by the power of God's word alone, the Holy Spirit blows his breath of life into you. And you, God's people, live by God's spirit. You, God's people, live forever because of the Holy Spirit's gift of faith in Jesus Christ.